Welcome to another episode of Hair Biz Radio with your host, Zakira and Mikey. Nah. <laughs> and Mikey! So- <laughs> uh, see, you guys thought I would just do my normal Mikey. If you've been listening to me for the last 45 episodes, you know, I always go, Mikey! It's kind of my thing. Let's try to trick with it a little bit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What's All up? Right. What's up? What's up? So today we're going to do like a Q&A style. So we have a Facebook group called Start a Hair Business Group. If you're not familiar with it, make sure you join the group. If you go to Facebook and type in Start a Hair Business. Start a hair extension business. Start a hair extension business. Excuse me. You will be able to find it. Um, and we just share like different tips and tricks in there. Um, marketing strategies. A lot about what's going on with private label extensions. Um, we help people build, build their hair brands. Um, we just provide a lot of resources and tools in that group. So if you're not a part of it, make sure you join. Yeah, look for the one that has 34,000. Just look for the one with the most people in it. 34,000. That's us. That was shade, by so, the way. Hey, look. That group, that group clean though, like as far as spam and everything oh, yeah, else for yeah, a yeah. Facebook group, we spend a lot of time. I have a lot of pride in this group. Oh yeah, for we sure. We spend a lot of time managing this group, like all hours of the night. Yep. Yeah, a lot. So the group is really, really important to the business. Uh, would love to have you in there. Definitely. So we did a, a poll um, in the Facebook group and some people asked some questions. So this episode we're going to dedicate towards answering some questions and then uh, we'll talk a little bit about what we have going on. Yeah. So actually, what do you have going on? I, I saw we got, I actually uploaded some new videos, some Zakira's two minute tips. Yep. Or they don't, they're not less two minute tips. They're so, quick business tips, right? So they're, yeah. They're not two minutes. Um, some of them are like five minutes. Some of them are a minute. Some of them are four minutes. Um, but yeah, just basically tips that you'll be able to walk away with after watching the video. You don't feel overwhelmed. It's like, okay, this was very basic, very informative. I can go implement this one thing today into my business. So something that'll help you kind of, um, if you're having trouble figuring out where to start, it'll just help you just start, um, anywhere from basic beginners or people who have had their hair business, um, just may not have known these specific things. It works. You know what's funny about that? And you say that is one of my, uh, this one podcast I've been listening to for a while. Um, their, their whole episode is only about like eight minutes long mm-hmm. and it's one subject of marketing. And they talk about that one marketing subject and that's it for the podcast done. The one and done. Tell one? Yeah. So it's just like yeah, that yeah. one and done. And it's like, make me want to start another, another podcast just about like hair extension marketing podcast, strict, quick eight minute tip or five minute kind of thing. Oh, no, you don't. You got All enough right. podcast, video, YouTube series, extra this, extra that going on. I know. You don't do. need to start in the podcast, which brings me to my next question. So Mikey has a book coming out. Ooh, Ooh, yes, yes. He put it out to the world already. So what's going on with the book? Like, where are you at in the process? When can people expect it? The book, which it's titled, um, the hair business blueprint. Yeah. Fearless, how, is, fearless, how do I know that? And he's fearless. <laughs> I was dramatic pause. Fearless beauty. The hair business blueprint. Right? Like when it. we were coming up for the title, because hair business blueprint, it's just so like, meh, 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 like robot, right? <laughs> yeah. So we didn't want the robot, but it was kind of like, okay, what's the, the topic? So the topic is beauty. Mm-hmm. And then a lot of the talk, a lot of what I talk about in the book is you have to be fearless in business. Yeah. So it's like, I'm not calling myself a fearless beauty, you know, obviously I could be a fearless beauty. Um, (laughs) It's just that kind of just worked for the book. Yeah. Um, So, you know, it was funny because I, I talked to a friend of mine that went through this book program Mm -hmm. and his sale. And, and I, when he first told me about it and working with this company, I looked at how expensive it was. I was like, Whoa, (laughs) no way. Am I spending money like this? Right. So I reached out to him and this is during the beginning, somewhat of the beginning of COVID. Mm -hmm. And I reached out to him and I said, Hey man, I said, just how did the book work out for you? And he's like, Mikey is one of the best things I did for my business. Now, granted his business went from 8 million a year. The next year he did 16 million. Oh wow. Doubled it. And when you double your business, when you're at that level, it gets Mm -hmm. very, very hard. When you go from like 1 million to 2 million and you're like, I doubled my business. That's difficult, but it's not as difficult as going 8 million to 16 16. million. So I was just like, oh, wait, that's pretty big. So I like to do things. If it works for somebody else, maybe it'll, maybe not that big, but maybe it'll work for us. Yeah. The COVID hit. I said, I'm saying going nowhere. (laughs) I can't travel. (laughs) I'm stuck here. 
I knew what the process would be because it was like this weekly call and this whole kind of process. Mm -hmm. So I said, I, this is the time. I knew this was the time to yeah. do a book. And I didn't want to, I've, I've always wanted to do a book, but I wanted to reach a certain level of success where, you know, we do this book and this is from somebody that like, you know, has done some things. Yeah. You know, because a lot of times like it gets real aggravating when I see people, they're like, oh, I'm going to help you with your sales. And I'm like, you just told me you sold like a hundred dollars <laughs> this month. Like, how are you going to teach someone else to be uh, successful yeah. That's just if terrible. you're not successful? Yeah. Right. I've seen it all the time. You know, I can officially say, because it'll be in ink next year when we make fastest growing companies again. Mm, again. You know, we, we had are, to throw that again. <laughs> we are officially one of the very few eight figure hair companies in the United States. That's exciting. That's pretty big. Yeah. It's big. You know, it's 100% dedicated to my mom. You know, shout um, out to Miss Vicky. Yeah. I miss my mom. Um, so that's 100% dedicated to my mom. Obviously, the staff, everybody came yeah. together. We had to make a lot of changes internally to be able to get to that point. Mm -hmm. It's a big deal if you actually research going from seven figures to eight figures. Yeah. So then I figured, I, I was just like, you know what? This is time. Let me do this book. I think there's so many things. Like, I get all the feedback. I read so many comments in our Facebook group. And I'm like, there's so many things people just need to know. Yeah. And if I knew this, if someone sat me down and said, read this book. Like we would be so much further than we are today. Yeah. I mean, I'm very thankful for where we are today, despite especially everything going on. But I feel like we would have been really f a lot further, yeah. especially my younger career. Because like, okay, you have your dad. You're honestly like lucky because Kendall's like my guy. I talked to him the other day. Ah. You know, he read the forward for the book and he's like, Mikey, phenomenal. You know him, phenomenal. Yeah, phenomenal. You, know? <laughs> you know, so Boom. just, <laughs> yeah. So like you had good guidance mm. and I think you're very fortunate to have that. Right. And, um, and I respect that. That's like so, so fantastic. Yeah. I never had any of that. Well, I think that the guidance came for me in my adult years. Like it wasn't always like that. Like the oh, guidance. No. Yeah, yeah. 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 Cause you, your dad started his business, which took off and yeah. I, we started uh, the hair company about the same time. Yeah. Right. You know, so yeah. that's why he was like, I actually asked him for a blurb in my book. Cause mm -hmm. he's very special to me. Yeah. Right. He's like one of the, one of the guys that I've met over the last, you know, six, seven years during this journey that mm -hmm. I still stay in contact with. Yeah. That like once you reach more success, your friends like you'll know who your friends are. You'll know who your haters are. Yeah. You know, um, friends are kind of like, oh, well, you know, oh, you have all this money now and stuff. I'm like, I don't have all this. Yeah, we sold a lot. But look, that's I'm reinvesting. The yeah. That's the business's money. I'm reinvesting everything yeah. back in this business. And that's the one thing that I learned. Like you see all these businesses making millions and millions of money, but it's not the person. It's the business. And a lot of things get reinvested back into the business the business owner is on a salary and this you know that's just how it goes so yeah so don't get that construed when you yeah. start seeing these big numbers thinking yeah. i'm like out there balling like no <laughs> bottles popping <laughs> of course it's covid but no bottles yeah. are being popped you know like very still very very conservative because yeah. it takes years and years of that to like start building up real wealth mm -hmm. right and i and i'm very upfront i even talk about it in my book like i was broke when i started this company yeah broke. We barely put any money in and then we grew it to this. Yeah. You know, we own millions of dollars in real estate now. You know, we have amazing numbers, the brand, everything. So I wanted to put in a book so I could help hopefully change other people's lives. Yeah. So who exactly is the book for? The book could be technically could be for any entrepreneur, the mm -hmm. first half, especially it could be for any entrepreneur. But when writing a book, um, and I'm working with the experts, they right. say you have to have your niche, mm -hmm. right? Because if it's your first book and you don't have a niche, it's not going to be successful, mm. right? So that's obviously in the hair industry and beauty. So that's why it's, you know, beauty. But, yeah. you know, it's supposed more specific about the hair industry. You know, so the book's really for the hair industry. It's understanding for the beauty, but overall could be for entrepreneurs. Yeah. You know, so that's, uh, that was the focus and, you know, obviously with our Facebook group and our clients and what we're doing, um, I it's think gonna it's going to be, be a game changer. The book is going to be a game changer. It's going to be good. Yeah. Right. I'm excited to read the whole thing. So I, I read the beginning, um, for it as well. Yeah. Um, and it was definitely, it was just good to see on paper, like, because I know your story and I know kind of where you came from and I know when you first got started and I know how you've grown up into this point. So to me, I'm proud of that. I'm proud of you for where you've Well, you've, you've been there now. step by yeah. step along the whole way. So I mean, you're I part have, of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> so, I mean, I'm proud that you've been here. That, yeah. That's part of the story. You yeah. know? So it's, it's amazing that, you know, think about it. 2.0 here, 
you, yeah. Tiara, yeah. The, the first three are still with us today. Oh yeah. I mean, that's crazy. So yeah. that's part of the success for, you know, for, for everything. So, yeah. you know, it's been, I've been working on it for like five, six months now. Yeah. And I still have another like four months to go. So we can expect it. I'm, I'm pushing for March. Ooh. Yeah. March, 2021. Yeah. So it's going to end up being like a full 10 month process. Mm-hmm. This isn't something that I just like whipped up real quick. Like, yeah. It's just like literally having a baby. You're birthing a book. Like yeah. a lot of people say that the, the birthing experience is like nine months, but it, in reality it's really like 10 months. So. Right. Yeah. So it's just, you know, it's one of those things where there's a lot put into this. It's just yeah. not something to kind of throw out there. Mm-hmm. You know, if I'm going to put, if it's going to be my first book, it's got to be. Excellent. Oh, great quality. Excellent quality. Yeah. yeah. So and then you're a freaking <laughs> genius. Like, and then, is there, where's her tequila? Have you been dipping in my bottle? No. Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Behind Zakira, I have one of probably the better tequila collections in Atlanta, and I'm very proud of it. Now we might have to do like a little pan on the tequila. <laughs> Don't be getting on my tequila. But nobody needs to see all those bottles. <laughs> but yeah, like you're a freaking genius when it just comes to business in general. So putting that into a book, working with people to actually get it written, it's it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's going to be good. Yeah. I'm excited for it. Uh, look, I'm ready. I'm ready. So uh, let's get into these hair business questions. So yeah. we posted in the Facebook group. Uh, we might be reading your question. We have a decent amount, you know, that um, have come along. So the first one, you'd probably be good at this one, is uh, how to calculate prices. How to calculate pricing. It's kind of a so, general question. Very, very general. But yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm just going to make a little joke before then. Like, I first of all, I failed math class twice when I was in school, okay? I hate numbers. I hate calculating stuff. But how to calculate prices. So I would, I'll would, i just give a general example, and I think I used this one in the last um, podcast we did. So if you have a product where you're buying a 10-inch bundle for 19 bucks, and you're trying to figure out what should I sell it for, the first thing you want to do is do a competitive analysis of the companies around you. What is the market saying that this bundle is going for? So if you do a competitive analysis and you see bundles at 10-inch for anywhere between 40 and $70, then you can say, okay, um, if I do it for on the kind of lower spectrum, 50 bucks, you're still making a $29 profit, right? Uh, 31. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> she was close. Look, she was only off by two bucks. You know? I said it. I said it. Yeah. So um, when it comes to calculating pricing, the really good thing is that if you're in the, the Facebook group, we have a um, price sheet in there. And so we give you the wholesale price, our drop shipping price, and then a suggested retail price. So we've kind of already done the legwork for you. So if you just take those prices um, and know that that is very close to what the pricing is in the market. Right. You can kind of gauge up or gauge down however you want to do that. Um, and then do you want to talk about kind of like the delivered costs? Um, yeah. So in, in getting back to that about doing competitive analysis, make sure you know what you're comparing. Yeah. Right. You got to compare apples to apples. Yeah. You can't say like just real briefly on private label wholesale, we have three levels of quality. We have the basic, mm-hmm. right. The premium and then the raw. Yep. Right. So the raw hair is above and beyond quality, Mm -hmm. but it's expensive. Yeah. Right. So don't get a 10 inch bundle and you're buying like the basic cheap bundle. Yeah. A 10 inch bundle on private label wholesale is literally twelve dollars. Yeah. Right. So don't buy that twelve dollar bundle and then do your competitive analysis and and compare it to like raw hair. That's a 10 inch bundle. That's a good point. Yeah. Eighty dollars a bundle. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, oh, I can charge 70 and that's not. So do apples (laughs) to apples. So when you're doing uh, uh, delivered costs, which is real important to figure out how much you actually pay for something, Mm -hmm. right? Because a lot of people are like, oh, you know, if I go into private label, a 10 inch bundle is, I think, $29. Yeah. Right. They're like, but on this, on your website, it's this much, right? Or if I buy it from another vendor, it's this much. And I was like, okay, cool. I understand that. But (laughs) does the vendor give you free shipping? Oh no, offended. No, I got to pay for shipping. Okay, so you're buying 10 bundles and yeah. how much is shipping? $25. Oh, okay, so that's $2.50 that, yeah. per bundle for shipping, right? That just added to your your cost, your mm-hmm. delivered cost. You need to know how much it is in your hands when yeah. you're selling it. Then you got to ask. Okay, you know, a lot of overseas vendors they charge like extra fees if you're paying by like PayPal or oh, something yeah. like that. Transaction right? costs. The transaction costs generally around 5%. Mm-hmm. So if you bought you know, 10 bundles at say $30 a bundle, it's 
three hundred dollars plus shipping. It's another twenty five, and you add five percent of that, you're mm-hmm. at like another probably about sixteen dollars on ten bundles. That's a dollar sixty a bundle. So you have two fifty. Plus a dollar sixty. People are like, what the hell? Mikey should have been a um, a math teacher. No, honestly, <laughs> I I failed. I barely passed high school. By the way, I, I passed high school with a GPA of one point nine. Wow. Okay, algebra, geometry. Cal- I never, I never made a calculus, <laughs> but like the basic B math, like the adding the basic B math. <laughs> look, the adding of normal numbers, the little percentage stuff. I'm like, you know, but the other stuff. Nope. But anyway, so you're you're taking two fifty plus a dollar sixty, right? So you're at four dollars and ten cents a bundle mm-hmm. to get it into your hands. Yeah. So some people forget to add the calculated price. You know, so you have to you have to um or excuse me, the delivered cost. So that's how you have to calculate your prices based on that delivered cost. So don't get it, you know, don't cut yourself short. I think you have to make room for discounts. Oh yeah, for sure. Right. You know, you got to have coupons and all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. You got to make room for that. Cause if you, if you cut it too short, you know, you're going to cut yourself, you know, with you're a right. discount, you might lose money. Yeah. You know? For sure. Yeah. So I think with the calculated pricing, um, you just have to be smart. I think uh, what people get, um, a little confused or I don't want to say confused, a little greedy with is with drop shipping. Oh uh, yeah. Is like, you literally don't have to inventory it. You don't have to pack ship it. Like, in in the real world, you shouldn't be making as much per bundle. Yeah. Because all the other expenses are built into that. For sure. Yeah, that makes so much sense. You know, so like with that, it's more about customer acquisition. And then um, once you get the customer, if you say Body Wave is the most popular and you're selling a bunch of Body Wave, then maybe start buying from private label wholesale some Body Wave and start shipping some of that yourself. Yep. If you're on vacation, that's okay. Then you can go back to drop shipping it. Yep. You know, the drop shipping is a great backup, even as you start to make it. Yeah, it's great backup. And then it's also great for first timers who are just getting into the business and um, they don't really have the funds to inventory things, one or two. They just kind of don't have the time. And even if someone does have the funds, I've had so many people reach out to me, Mikey, I have $2,000 to spend. I'll spend it right now. Just tell me what to buy. Yeah. And I'm like, whoa, 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 pump the brakes over there. Mm -hmm. Right. Don't spend them. I I would love to sell you $2,000 worth of hair. Yeah. Don't spend that money yet. Yeah. Right. Get into the dropship program. It's very low cost. You don't even know what your customers are going to buy. You haven't sold anything yet. How are you going to go up and spend $2,000 on hair? That makes no sense. Yeah. Then you have inventory sitting there. Right. So, you know, get in with the drop shipping and then you can start switching over to a hybrid model, which is what our most successful clients do. Yeah. That's really the way to do it. And then, but with drop shipping, don't expect to make as much on your hair because you don't, you're not paying delivered costs. You're yep. not paying transaction fees. You're not paying for labels. People forget those Dymo labels are expensive as hell. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to print a packing slip. It takes time. Yep. Guess what? To pack and ship these orders. You know, Mm -hmm. so there's, there's a lot involved in that. So take that into calculating your prices that if you're drop shipping, don't expect to make as much, but that's okay. Perfectly. Okay. You're not doing much except for marketing, which is important. Yeah. That's like the most important. Yeah. So, (laughs) uh, the next question actually is how to prepare for black Friday properly, but we Uh, just recorded that. So if you're listening to this, go back two episodes. Yes. Okay, numbers over there. <laughs> Zakir's new nick- nickname is Numbers. No, it's not. Don't go uh, it. <laughs> all right, numbers are over there. Okay, so we recorded episodes, that. Yeah. And, you know, even if you're listening to this black, uh, past Black Friday and you mm-hmm. haven't listened to it, it's still a great episode. We talk about a lot of discounts and sales and yep. how to do that. Um, and start planning for the next year. You can never plan too early. Start getting ideas in your head and start creating that master plan because yep. if you have a killer like Black Friday, Cyber Monday week or whatever, it can set you up yep. really good. And start creating that email list, getting people on your email list. Staying For engaged. sure. Yep. So the next question is uh, how to turn leads into sales. That's a good question. That's a great question. Yeah. Let me like that question. As a matter of fact, what do you guys care? How do you just, how do you turn leads into sales? What do you think? How to turn leads into sales. Um, so the first thing, what we talked about last episode, and we talk about this a lot is creating like that freebie, um, downloadable or something, basically getting something in exchange for giving something. And in this case, you would want to collect either text messages, 
text messages. You want to collect either phone numbers or emails. Um, so start building that list. Um, but you want it to be something that people actually care about. So it might be like we talked about before, um, early access to something. Uh, Mikey has like this VIP text list. So um, you kind of market it as basically if you want to know all the secrets or like the be the first to know about the VIP deals or whatever, get on my text list. So something like that. Um, you can even do a downloadable, like how to take care of your hair extensions uh, when they're installed. Like people want to know, OK, how do I take care of these extensions so that I can preserve them as I go along? Um, you can even do coupons like 25 percent off your first order. All of those things create um, is they're basically lead magnets. Right. So um, once you do that, after doing that, then you have to stay engaged with them. Um, hair extensions are a little bit different because people aren't just going to a new hair extension company and buying hair extensions the first time they see them. Um, it's almost like a car. Like when you're buying a car, you're going to go to some different um, car dealerships. You want to drive the car. You want to know what other people think about that car. You're going to research the car before you actually buy it. So with hair extensions, it's the same because women, we care about our hair. Like hair extensions are like a hot commodity. They're like a necessity. So um, they want to know, like, how long has your company been, been around? They want to see what other review reviews you have on your website. So they may see your company maybe five to 10 times before they actually purchase that first time. So you, your goal is to make sure you're staying in front of them on a consistent basis. So that'll be video content, um, social media content, blog posts, um, emails, newsletters, and then following that 80, 20 rule, 80% value, knowledge, 20% um, selling, right? So just staying in front of them on a consistent basis. And then eventually they will buy. You know, what's funny is you said something and I never really thought of it in this capacity before, but because you said it, it made me think of something when you're talking about like, you know, shopping around and doing all the stuff. Now, let's just say I go to Nike, mm -hmm. right? I might go to Nike tomorrow and I might buy four pairs of shoes right. at one time. Oh Yeah. Right. Whereas in hair extensions, most people, they're not going to buy four wigs at once. Right. They're going to buy one wig because mm -hmm. I was thinking of that cycle of like, you know, I usually say it's like a four to six week cycle yeah. that someone's getting new hair and you have to get in the new hair like in that cycle. So that's why staying in touch with people is so important and building up that rapport and the branding. Yeah. Like branding, turning leads into sales. It's so much about branding. Right. It's like you have to be constantly building your brand consistently sending out these messages, yep. consistently providing value, you know, stuff like this podcast. We're not selling in this podcast, but this podcast provides value for right. the brand. Yeah. You know, so that's crucial. I think that if you've listened to the podcast from literally episode one until now, if you aren't somewhere increasing sales or you know, just being better than you were when you first started, then we're doing something wrong. <laughs> it, but, but it also comes down to this, right? Like a lot of people, you spend a lot of time educating yourself, which is important, but then, but then you, then don't you apply. have to do action. Yeah. Right. It's not just like reading comments on Facebook all day. That's not yeah. action. Yeah. Posting on your personal Facebook page. That's not action. You really have to take action. you got to mess things up. Yeah. The reason why we've been successful and stuff is we've never been scared of messing things up, yeah. right? That's that fearless beauty. It's like, you have to be fearless. You got to go in, fail forward. Yeah. Like go ahead and mess things up and get that on your way. Cause you're going to mess things up regardless. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, that's, that's really key. So, you know, turning those leads into sales, it's all about nurturing, providing great value, great content, uh, staying in front of them. And just at the right moment, maybe offer a discount. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but to what you said that is true like people aren't buying four wigs at a time like and maybe when they saw your ad or post maybe they just bought a wig so right. now they're not buying from you for another four to six weeks that cycle yeah so that's right. super true yeah so the next question is we actually covered this in a previous podcast but we can talk about it real quick a little bit is um what would be your very first step to open a mobile hair extension store or a storefront in general? Oh yeah. We did a whole podcast on this. Um, it is in season three. I think it might even be the first episode, the first episode in season three. Um, but we're literally, we, we talked about in the last podcast, how we went from the suites kind of set up into the first building where we are now. And then um, now we're opening three, Three, three stores. more stores. Yep. yep. So like that first thing, what would you say 
um, when opening up a store, um, do you do? The the first thing I would say is location, making sure. I would say you better have some money. <laughs> well, yeah, money. You need coins. <laughs> like those coins, because opening a store and we're opening like, I think honestly the Charlotte store, we're getting open up the cheapest. Mm, mm. And when I say cheap, we're probably going to get it with all the registers, the kind of design, construction, everything. I'm probably in going to be in around like 25, maybe 25,000. And that's the cheap end. That's not including inventory, which is going to be another 50 to 100. Mm. Now, Detroit, which is going to be more of like a flagship store of the north, where oh, yeah. we're balling it down a little bit, that one's opening up um, probably, it's going to be closer to 70,000. Oh, wow. Big difference. Yeah. So you got to figure that plus hair, another 100,000. So yeah. you're at like 150, 170,000 for a store. So money is important. Money is important. You know, but after that, I would say location, like location yeah. is going to be key, you know, being able to neg negotiate the lease. Mm -hmm. But then there's also a lot involved. People don't realize that it's like, even if the space is built out nice and they're like, oh, okay, I get like, you know, I can open this up real quick. You can't just open up. Yeah. Permits. Fire marshal. Yeah. You know, the, the fire extinguishers. I was dealing with that today for Lithonia, all that kind of stuff. So you have, there's so many other things and it takes time. Yeah. It's not like you're on your clock. It's on their clock. And we're talking the government. The, okay. Okay. The they, government. They are not out there running the marathons. Mm -mm. Okay. And they are just turtling along. And if you're part of the government and you listen to this, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you guys need to stop playing and pick it up a little bit. Okay? Turn it up a notch. Let's turn it up a notch because you're slowing us entrepreneurs down. <laughs> okay. We're trying to move forward. So, yeah, you do that. Mm -hmm. And then, you know. The first store is hard, the hardest. Yeah. But you know? then the good thing about it is like, okay, we've done the first store. Actually, I remember um, when we first got this place, um, there was like so many setbacks. Like uh. we were supposed to be in here one month and then it was like another two or three months because stuff was happening. It was like seven months delayed. Yeah, yeah. There was, But we like were a, building the whole place. Yeah. So it was an empty frame. It's, it's different than just going into like a shopping center, kind of oh, like yeah. we're doing with these other ones. We're yeah. going to shopping centers and it's like, we don't have to build anything. Mm -hmm. We have to build a little bit, but yeah. not like everything. Yep. So dealing with contractors and their timing and if things are right or not right. Um, so yeah, that's something you have to think about too. Yeah. So, you know, you got that, then inventory, like just the bins, like Detroit, I spent $3,500 just on plastic bins. Oh, wow. Did you get the all black ones? I got mixed colors. So oh, I have okay. all the different colors. So depending on the type of product makes it easier. Oh, okay, gotcha. you know, they have like, I use Uline. So they have like the black, they have the red, the blue, the blue, the gray. Oh, yeah. And then they have the big clear bins. I don't know if I got any of the big clear bins. I don't think we need those for that store. You know, the big clear bins, they have these big ones we use here in Atlanta because, you know, we ship orders and stuff. Yeah. So so you got bins, you got registers, you got cameras, you have mirrors, you have, you know, decorations. Alarm you have system, internet. Alarm yeah. system, internet, you know, all these bills. Yeah. And, uh, you know, sometimes you have to deal with Comcast, which is my worst nightmare. I call it communist Comcast. Actually, the Com the Comcast guy, were you here when he called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Comcast guy, he's pushing me. I was like, yo, man, I, I'm about to record a podcast. I'm going to be like a little bit. He's like, I'll call you in an hour. I was like... Uh, can you make it two? <laughs> and he's like, well, I'm going to the doctor. And this, I said, look, man, stop being so Comcast. Just give me a little time. If we do it in the morning, it's fine. And Zakira's like, oh, da, 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 you know, who is that? And I was like, that was literally Comcast. I'm <laughs> stop being so Comcast. So dealing with them is like dealing with the devil. It's like dealing with North Korea. That wasn't nice. Um, I'm just saying. That's why. Look, you want to talk about branding? Comcast, the reason why the residential service is called Xfinity mm -hmm. is because they messed up their brand so oh, yeah, bad Comcast, yeah. and had to change their damn name. So <laughs> don't be like <laughs> Comcast. Comcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's hilarious. There, okay. if, you, if you really want to know, I would say go back to that. Uh, Listen to that episode. We talked yeah. a lot about specifics um, with opening up some tips and tricks. Um, um, yeah, we talked about that. Now, one qu quick thing is it does also say here a mobile hair extension store. Mm. That's not for me. Mm -mm. <laughs> like that boy, that's just way too easy to steal that whole car full of hair. Oh, yeah. We I even mean, you, talked about that before. Yeah, yeah, you basically have packed up all the stuff someone steal in a car. 
So mm-hmm. all they have to do is steal the damn car. It's real easy to do these days. Oh, yeah. You know, put up a tow thing to it, gone. Yeah, but that's not to discourage you. So if you have, like, this idea, you just kind of got to figure this idea, out inventory. I mean, if you can find out how to buy an armored vehicle. Yeah, or, um, or you know, it would be, like, what? literally you... <laughs> Like, you know how stores take their inventory out and lock it up every day? So if you're driving mobile, then you have yeah, to that's transport true. Yeah, all you of can your take inventory. It out. Yeah, take yeah. it out. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Just don't park and go in for lawn. I mean, hair is just one of those things. It's a very high theft item. Yeah. Right? High, high, high. High theft. It's high. cash in the streets. It's not non-trackable. It's not yeah. like an iPhone that has like a serial number Buy and Apple iPhone. can be like, yeah. screw you, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, let's see how to do a photo shoot for your business. Do you give discounts on the hair the models will use? Oh yeah. So you could go about that a couple different ways. Um, I know from people that I've talked to and then what we've done, um, normally when we do photo shoots and we're kind of, I'm not gonna say we're on a higher level, but we kind of do, we kind of did our shoots on a, a higher level to maximize everything. So, um, the, I think the, the shoots that we used to do, um, we would provide the hair extensions yep. and we would pay our models um, for their time as well as the photographer. Um, but if you're just starting out, of course, and your budget isn't that big when doing photo shoots, I would recommend either giving away the hair for free, of course, and then, um, you know, providing the makeup and photographer and everything um, and maybe not paying the salary. Maybe the salary can be what they're getting for the hair, right? Yeah, the the hair. hairstyle, you get you get free hair. Um, so that's an option too. Another option is saying, hey, I would love for you to be a part of this shoot. Um, you can get your hair done for free. However, you have to purchase the extensions at a discounted rate or you you giving them to them at your wholesale rate, something like that. It just depends on how you work it out, how you present it, how you pitch it. Um, but I've seen everything from that to what we just talked about. Yeah, you know, you might luck out because you might not get as high of a caliber of a model. Correct. If mm-hmm. you're just like, you have to buy the hair and all this stuff. Yeah. And you're like, wait, what? what? Yeah. Like, how's this benefiting me? <laughs> you know, so you might not get as high caliber as a model, but you might also catch someone at the right time, mm-hmm. which someone, it could be a better quality model and be like, oh, wait, the model's like, I do need hair right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I might not get paid, but at least I get free hair. Yep. Right. So what we do at Private Label, because, you know, we like to make sure people are taken care of. We do give away the hair for free. Models mm-hmm. generally make like a hundred dollars. Yeah. So they get a hundred dollars. But a photo shoot's expensive to do two to do two models. Right. That's two hundred dollars to pay the hairstylist. Yeah. Pay the makeup, makeup artist, artist. Photographer. We had a videographer. We had to have like a creative person there yeah. to help manage everything. You know, even if they're hourly, you mm-hmm. still have all that up. We have a studio. We own all the equipment. Yeah. And it still would be like after photo editing, after all said and done, edit photos, edit videos, all this, you're like two grand for the photo shoot for two models. Yep. So if you don't have all of that and you're bringing in a, a photographer or you're utilizing a space, then you have to talk about rental fees for that um, and equipment, rental equipment, all of that. So yeah, it, it can get a little pricey. Um, but I would say if you're just starting off and you don't have a big budget, you know, um, you can offer bundles at your wholesale price, or I would recommend investing into just purchasing the bundles for your models. Say, Hey, you get free hair. Um, you'll have a, either you'll have a makeup artist or you can tell them to come with their makeup already done. I would recommend getting a makeup artist though, just so everything is in sync and synchronized when it comes to the photos, because they are your brand photos. Um, but keeping it short, like if you just use two models, um, maybe two different hair types, you have a, a body wave and maybe a straight something that you can use for, um, you know, like photos just for the website and not necessarily each product how we have now, but um, just for header images and promoting and branding and marketing and all of that good stuff. Um, But do something small if that's what you can afford now. But I would definitely recommend either providing the hair or some sort of discount at the wholesale rate. And the reason why we would usually shoot like two or three models at once mm-hmm. is it actually saves you costs because yeah. like the photographer stays busy, the videographer stays busy, mm-hmm. the hairstylist might charge like $200, but like to do two other people for a total of three. Mm-hmm. And one person might be 200, but for three people might be 300. Yeah. Right. Makeup artists there, they charge just to come out mm-hmm. and then it's like, oh yeah, I can add these couple people because it's not that much work. You yeah. know, a lot of it, they're charging for travel time too, mm-hmm. you know, so you can kind of bunch it all together and then it, you figure per model, your cost goes down. Yeah. Now being able to do five, that might not work because the hairstylist to do five hair heads is a lot of work. Yeah. They can, if they're fast and good, can maybe do three. 
more than three, we haven't had any luck. So we kind of like stuck at three. Yeah. Um, so, you know, think about that, how you can maximize that and get the most out of it for your money. Because at the end of the day, it is your money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that um, was good. So Sierra and the group asked how to, kind of similar to the first one, how to market effectively to increase sales. But I think we can talk a little bit more about, that's more like marketing based. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing is going to be engagement. Like no one wants to just see um, flyers every day saying buy this or go here or purchase this. Um, they want to engage. So coming up with some engaging content, I know now reels are very um, popular. Um, people are into the reels and TikTok and um, YouTube. So creating some sort of um, series maybe where you're talking about hair extensions. Um, yeah, I think that engaging content is going to be the biggest thing when it comes to um, marketing. Yeah, and you brought up something pretty important was reels. So yeah. that's something new Instagram copied from TikTok, TikTok mm -hmm. right? So they copy everything. Yeah. So <laughs> what they do with when they do something like that, they want everyone to use it. So they mm -hmm. will promote the hell out of every reel. Yeah. Even if your reel's not good, like mine, me dancing, it's not good, but it'd get like a thousand views. Yeah. Right? Because they want to promote it heavy. Mm -hmm. So when something like that comes out, it's a huge marketing opportunity to get oh, in front yeah. of a lot of people mm -hmm. is to just put out reels as much as you can. Yep. Because you know Instagram, whether it's good or not, Instagram's going to promote it so yep. more people make reels and try to make better ones than you. you know, I mean, really, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. I would say build your list, mm -hmm. right? So build... Email list. Email list, text list, push notifications list. You know, start a podcast. Yeah. Or maybe not start a podcast. It's a lot involved. But you know what I'm saying? It's just everything is a list. Think of everything yeah. as a list. You know, your YouTube channel, stuff like that. Yeah. Being consistent is going to be key. Mm -hmm. The Facebook, Instagram ads still, hands down, the best paid marketing you can do. Oh, yeah. Don't, I wouldn't recommend getting into the Google AdWords because you're up against some steep competition. It's very crowded, very expensive. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, it is. And very boring. It's like that, those text ads. It's just, you can't be creative. You can't really go ahead with it. People can't share it with their friends. You know, we, I get on there every once in a while for some retargeting, but not too much. Yeah. Um, so that's, you know, I would be, be limited with that. You know, it depends on how much paid versus um, free you want to do. Like blogging can be great, but, you know, honestly, with SEO and everything, it could take a year for you to show up. Mm -hmm. But if you don't start, guess what? It, it'll never happen. It'll never happen. <laughs> yeah. So you, you don't necessarily have to put a huge all your time into it because it's going to take forever. Yeah. If it works. If, if Google decides works. to like you, they might not like you, right? Yeah. It's just that simple. So, <laughs> you know, if it works. So, you know, there's there's a lot you can do. Um, you just really it's consistent and keep trying different things. Yeah, definitely keep trying different things. Um, one thing may not work for it. What, what worked for us may not work for other people. Um, and you kind of just got to pick apart and see what works for you specifically. Right. Yeah. You know, just be creative. And as you grow, um, as you grow, you, it allows you to kind of, I don't, I don't, how do I explain this? It's almost like for us, we've been doing this seven years. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times I'm just like, I just made that up in a, out of nowhere and it's so successful, Yeah. but I made it up, but it's because I've had seven years of experience, of experience, about yeah. 15 years of online selling e-commerce mm -hmm. experience that when I just quote unquote, make something up, there was probably actually not even in my head realizing it, a lot of thought that was involved yeah. in the making making this thing up. Yep. You know, kind mm -hmm. of like that has been successful for us. Um, so experience is the best teacher. Yeah, experience <laughs> goes a long way. Yeah. You know, and then being careful of like you're comparing yourself. Like, don't if you just started, don't compare yourself with private label. Oh, You've been yeah. doing this seven years. Mm -hmm. That's like that uh, quote or saying: Don't compare your chapter one to somebody else's chapter ten. It's just yeah. that simple, but you got to get started. You got to fail forward. You got to mm -hmm. just keep pushing. You know, I know you get discouraged when you don't get sales. You got to just, you have to be, you just have to be consistent with your marketing day in, day out Yeah, and keep it clean. I see people try to do like way too much. A lot, like, a lot. A lot, <laughs> like your videos, like, okay, you don't need a video. If you're on YouTube, I highly recommend uh, searching Hair Biz Radio, seeing our new episodes, it's on a whole nother level. You don't need this level yeah. for marketing for your hair business, right? I actually have an ad I would love to show you. Like, I have this one ad that we just, I don't know where I took these money guns. And oh, I remember that ad, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I have these money guns, right? 
See right here. Where's the money? Oh, oh, these are real dollars. Hey, dollars, okay, dollars. I got real money gun over here. Okay, real guys. Money. Um, I, I always come prepared. Look, Magic City Mondays, <laughs> you right down the street. Wait. Okay. <laughs> so I, I come prepared. So we had this video of like these, like the girls are just there, and we yeah. have the money flying out. Mm -hmm. That ad, and I'm targeting a cold audience. I, I, I almost don't even want to tell you the return on investment on that. It's like sixty. Eight to one. Oh wow! And I was only spending five dollars a, a day, and then I didn't mm -hmm. check it for a while, and I checked, and I spent like a thousand for like seventy thousand in sales. Oh, that's and I was just like, I spent twelve hundred for seventy thousand in sales, and I was like, and I, I did some, you know, you know, my tweaks with the Facebook ad. I did, I did some things. Like, <laughs> you know, they talk about. I did some things, but it was to a cold audience, people that don't know private label. Yeah, and to generate that is just unbelievable Bananas. yeah but it was like this basic video it wasn't even that high quality yeah. and stuff and it just works sometimes if you're overproduced and like something like this this is not overproduced but this is very produced yeah it is that doesn't mean it's going to be a better return on investment for your ads some of those ads that look like it's just natural mm -hmm. those are some of the best ones those are some of the best ones but always have good sound Yes. That's the one thing I recommend. Yes. Because like for me, when I get calls and people are talking or if I'm watching the people like watch this video and the sound's messed up, I don't care how good the quality it is. Yeah. If that sound, if I can't hear it, I get so frustrated. Yeah. And I'm just like, I can't, I can't do this. I can't do it. Yeah. It's so frustrating. So yeah. that ad is going to piss someone off. They're gone. Yeah. No, that's true. Definitely. When you're doing videos, make sure the sound is good. I think I remember a couple of times I did videos and I didn't have like the mic on and Mikey was like, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, I probably literally freaked out. Like I can imagine me like freaking out, kind of like the video editor. Remember William? Oh, so yeah. William, like with the sound levels, he, oh, like, yeah. he didn't know it would stay between six and 12. Dowie over here behind the uh, cameras and the, all the other equipment we have, he knows the six and 12. That's one of the first things I learned with video editing because yeah. like it would keep peaking and he would like send me the first video. I was like, dude, what the hell is this? I was like, you got to fix the sound. He's like, yeah, I did fix the sound. There's no way you fix the sound. This thing's <laughs> crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's just one of those things. You got to have good sound. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, but yeah, so the, another question was, do we have, when they say we, I do love that because they feel like they're part of the team. Ah, which is the yeah. goal. Mm -hmm. Do we have a hair guard product to go with our hair glue? So that is something they put on, like you put down first oh, so before you put on the glue. Actually, we do. We just have to release it and get it out there. So the answer is yes. It's coming soon. Yeah. That don't ask what question. date. Don't ask what. <laughs> we got a lot on our plate with like new products. Yeah. Like there's some rumors about some cosmetic stuff coming. Um, rumors, huh? Some rumor Dallas put something out already, so I mean, cats out of the bag, just <laughs> whatever, you know. But look, let me be honest with you, Riri. <laughs> you know, I'm a huge fan. Kylie, you're cool, <laughs> but you guys can't get all that cosmetic money. My clients need it too. We got to be able to make it more accessible for them. Yeah, private label cosmetics. You know, it's gotta be, it's gotta be there because look, we got all these people coming in the stores. Mm -hmm. We have two stores right now, Greenville and Atlanta, but we're about to have Greenville, Atlanta, Charlotte, like Ghana, Ghana, yeah. Detroit. Yeah. And then you already know, I already have 15 other locations planned out. Mm -hmm. When you come into the store, you don't want just to get like, we had it just hair. Then we added the lace glue, yep. the lace glue cleaner. We had the lashes, you know, the edge control. Now we have the edge control brush. And people are like loving us more because mm -hmm. they're like, oh, I don't have to go here to this store yep. anymore. I can just come to private label and get everything and get everything. Yeah. So you might need, you know, you might be in a bind and you might need some, <laughs> you might need some, uh, some makeup, some lip gloss and some other stuff. Yeah. I don't need to get into it. But, you know, <laughs> maybe some matte, that matte lip gloss look kind of good. <laughs> So, you know, I mean, I know you're probably looking at me and be like, what the hell this Does guy he talking about, about cosmetics? Yeah. <laughs> I, I do not wear cosmetics, but I have a few people that would be happy to test out the cosmetics and let me know what they think. Mm -hmm. A few thousand um, just to get started. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, we do have that product. And, um, yeah, so that was actually all of the questions. Let me refresh here. Yep. That was all the questions. Pretty good questions. Yeah. Those are good group. questions. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, we invite everyone to be in the Facebook group. Just don't try to spam the group because my block finger, look, this block, oh, finger, I will block <laughs> quick, 
quick. <laughs> on a thousand. On a thousand. So, um, so yeah, it's yeah. been uh, interesting. Pretty Those good. are really good questions. You guys, if you're in the Facebook group um, or if you're listening to this podcast, make sure you put down some comments of um, topics that you want to hear us talk about in the future. We're always looking for uh, podcast episode topics that we can do. Um, we'll be having on some amazing people um, that we'll be interviewing in the future. So just make sure you guys stay tuned. Um, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, leave reviews, watch us on all the uh, podcast platforms, YouTube. Um, yeah, and we'll see you guys soon. You yeah, guys especially check oh. us out on YouTube. Yes. You My, gotta I, see this. This quality baller. Uh, when I look at it, baller. every time I just look and I sit back and I said, oh my God, we finally did it. Like it looks so it looks freaking very good. good. Yeah. So please check us out on YouTube. Yeah. Watch the whole thing. Don't skip around. You might miss one of those nuggets. Yeah, one of the nuggets. Yeah, Golden so nuggets. Yeah, so don't miss that. So uh yeah, that's it, guys. I got one last thing to say. Bye.